Good morning, everyone. It's our coffee chat on Friday, and this morning we're going to be talking with Sid Vanderpool, who is a NABO champion boxer, ranked number one in the world by the International Boxing Federation in 2004. Very excited to have him on. I'm just waiting for him to show up in the comments, and then I will invite him to chat. I can probably go ahead and even manually invite him just in case he hasn't seen it yet. I just manually invited him. There's always a glitch when you invite someone. I don't know if you've noticed that for those of you who hop onto my lives Hello. regularly. Hey, Sid. Hello. How are you? I'm good. good. Let's get set up. Yeah, yeah no worries. All right. I was just running through your credentials. <laughs> <laughs> So I was just telling them that you're a NABO champion boxer. You were ranked number one in the world by IBF in 2004, correct? That is correct. And if I'm correct, you also had 39 fights? Yes, 39 fights. You got it. Okay, and you won 35 of them, which is incredible. You know what? Looking back, yeah, yeah it was. Because I, I never even thought, like, if you'd said, oh, when you, you first turned pro, what did you think? I never thought I'd have almost 40 fights as a professional boxer. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That, yeah, that's like, I, I was looking that up last, you have a Wikipedia page, which I didn't know. I'm like, how yeah. is this? So I was on there, I'm like, I, that's incredible. The, you only lost four out of the entire fights that you did, which is insane. That's got to do something for your mentality when you're doing that. Yeah, you know, and um, I guess, you know, there's there's being in it and then there's looking back. Yeah. So, I mean, when I was in it, it was just like, okay, you know, mm -hmm. what's the next fight? How do we get to that next victory? How do we make that next step? And yeah. and that sort of thing. And then looking back, there's like the looking back going like, wow, mm -hmm. like, you know, we accomplished that and we did that. And, mm -hmm. and that was what, you know, and so, yeah, there's those two kind of views. That's crazy. Wow. Yeah. So for those of you who don't know who you are, could you give like a little background story of how you got into boxing and sort of your career and now where you're at? Yeah. So I have uh, four older brothers, mm -hmm. and my dad was, uh, he was our coach. So, um, you know, there's the, uh, I mean, again, 70s, mm -hmm. uh, the Jackson 5 was really big, yeah. right? So my dad was like, okay, I'm going to make my kids stars. Mm -hmm. So he bought us all instruments. He bought, uh, we had a guitar, we had trumpet, we had drums, uh, organ. Uh, yeah, so we had all these instruments. Mm -hmm. So he put them in the basement, and he put us in the basement, and he's like, all right, play. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't think you realize that you have to take actual lessons. So we played, but we played horribly. <laughs> so after a while, he just got tired of listening to us. Yeah. So he's like, okay, that's not working. And he loved watching boxing on television, mm -hmm. and he was very athletic. And so he's like, okay, I think I'll train them to be boxers. Mm -hmm. So he just started training us uh, in boxing. Mm -hmm. And then we all just started, uh, you know, uh, having different matches. And um, one time we were at a, a boxing show in Toronto. Uh, Vince Bagnetta was his name. Okay. And uh, he would have shows on television, like global television. Mm -hmm. And um, so he, Vince Bagnetta came in the back and said, yo, I don't have enough fighters. Does mm -hmm. anyone have anyone else that can fight tonight? And my dad looked at me, and I was six years old. And he goes, he'll fight. Oh, my God. And uh, I kind of looked up and like, oh, huh, I will? <laughs> and so... Uh, put my brother's shorts on me and they hung down to like my ankles and like you know i put the shoes on and put these gloves on and i get into the ring and I look across the ring and there's a boy and he's quite a bit taller than me i come to later find out he's nine all right so i'm six he's nine so i'm like look back at my dad and i look at the boy and I'm like i'll fight that boy i'm not going back to my dad say i'm not fight so i went in there and i just started throwing punches and i won my first fight at six and a half years old Wow. And I guess that's when he knew I was ready to, to start fighting. So sometimes, you know what? Yeah. Um, you don't know if you're ready. Mm -hmm. And it just takes people around you to kind of just give you a little nudge. Yeah. And uh, that's all it took. And that was the start of my, my boxing career. That's crazy. So you basically just got thrown into a ring and that launched a career. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Just like that. Yeah. So then was and, that yeah. your coach then for your entire time for boxing then? or No, he was my coach from 6 to 11. Okay. From 6 to 11. And then at the age of 11, I decided to do what every Canadian kid has to do. Hockey. And that's play the sport of hockey. So I went and I started playing hockey. And I was really good at skating backwards. So yeah. they put me on defense. And uh, 
honestly, I didn't really enjoy it. I was like, you know, if they're scoring you, it's your fault. You don't really get a chance to score goals. Mm -hmm. I was like, God, I'm not feeling this defense thing. So I did that for a couple of years, played some soccer. And then at the age of 17, mm -hmm. I got back into boxing. Uh, and this time I went to um, Arnie Beam, uh, who was also was running a gym in Kitchener. Mm -hmm. And Arnie Beam had, you know, the Johnson brothers. Uh, Chris won a bronze medal at the Olympics. Um, Greg Johnson, uh, Lennox Lewis, uh, so many great fighters uh, out of uh, Arnie's gym. And so that's where I went. And my first year back, I won the, uh, the Nationals. Mm -hmm. And so um, I got to travel around the world uh, representing Canada. Um, and then for the uh, 92 Olympics, mm. um, I finished second at the Olympic trials. And in boxing, they only signed the number one. Wow. So there I was. Uh, I was 18 turning 19. Yeah. Uh, and it was like, I can make a decision. You know, uh, do I wait around for the next Olympics mm -hmm. or do I turn pro? So, you know, gold medal. Gold Mercedes. I'm like, I think I want a gold Mercedes. I'm turning <laughs> pro. <laughs> right? So I, uh, you know, I decided to turn pro. And, um, okay. you know, my idol at the time was this guy named Marvelous Marvin Hagler. Okay. From Brockton, Massachusetts. And so my brother Keith and I, we started back then. They had these things called VHS tapes. Yeah. So we sent out these tapes all around to different promoters all around the world. And we got lots of feedback um, of promoters that wanted me to come in, basically audition. And you know about auditioning. So, yeah, right? That's a great so, thing. Like, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's a little nerve-wracking, like, well, I got to audition. So we decided, we got one back from the, the Petronelli's uh, in Broughton. And I was like, oh, we got to go there. So we loaded up the car and we went to Broughton, Massachusetts uh, to audition, so to speak. And um, we came out of the ring, uh, this Miss Barn came out of the ring and um, Goody Petronelli uh, looked at me and he said, guys, you guys come sit in the room. And yeah. he's like, we'd like to, to have you come uh, and live in Broughton, Massachusetts. Okay. Um, and one Im very important thing, I'll never forget this. He said that in boxing, yeah. um, and I've, I've later taken this to life, but in boxing, you need three things. You need coaching, mm -hmm. you need connections, and you need cash. Okay. All right. He goes, coaching, I'll be your coach. Mm -hmm. Connections with Marvelous Marvin Hagler, we've got lots of connections in boxing. Mm -hmm. Cash, see that guy sitting over the corner right there? That's your new manager. Okay. And, um, you know, we had the three things in place, and that's what I did. I moved to Broughton, Massachusetts at uh, 19 years old, and uh, it was a life-changing experience for me. Um, mm -hmm. Coming from Kitchener, Ontario, to Brockton, Massachusetts. So Brockton, Massachusetts. Oh, it was huge, right? Yeah. Um, they um, in Brockton at that time, they would take the other, um, the other cities um, uh, and states. They would take their welfare cases. So if you're on welfare in another state, you could transfer to Brockton, Massachusetts, and they would accept it. So there was a high, high, high propensity of lower income. Mm -hmm. And usually we get that. You also get a high rate of crime. Yeah. And so while I was there, I mean, I would see blood stains on the sidewalk while I was walking to the gym. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was quite a culture shock. Right. Uh, coming from, from Canada. Kitchener, so, we're technically a city, but I feel like we have more of a country city vibe here. <laughs> we are. I mean, even people that come from Toronto, like, they're yeah. like, wow, you guys are so country. Right. right. And, and it is. Kitchener, Kitchener is small. Yeah. But big, like, I mean, you know, yeah. the tech capital of Canada and <laughs> all this. So, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Kitchen's amazing. Yeah, definitely. I can totally see that. We did some tours when I was in high school with a music group, and we toured some of the different states. And one of them we toured was Chicago. And, again, like, the states, I find their cities, there's, there's such a big difference from here with some of them, as you were saying, like Massachusetts. I've never been to Massachusetts, but... Even just going to Chicago from here, it's like, whoa, like I feel so, I don't know, maybe it's because I was raised in the country too, right? Okay. Yeah. I, I grew up where you blink, you miss it. <laughs> mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. going to these bigger cities, you, you feel kind of like a small fish in like this huge pond. Yeah. That's how I feel. The, the energy is different, right? Yeah. Um, and you've been to New York. 
Yeah, so we did, we toured New York, we toured Chicago, we did Ohio. There was a bunch of other states we did. I can't remember all of them off the top yeah. of my head, but we basically did this whole music tour in high school. Wow. So what did you think of New York? I liked it. Um, yeah. Again, because I'm a country girl, I was a little intimidated by it, right? Because yeah. I was, I think I was 17. I wasn't experienced in the world enough yet to... Yeah but they let us loose in this, these cities so they, they, st they stuck us with our group of kids and then they let us loose and like be back here by this time and we had to figure out how to get around and get back to the spot they needed us to be at on our own so and that was back before they had like smartphones that told you where you could go right mm -hmm. yeah. yeah yeah no I, I, I similar to you I love New York too New York was New York is so yeah. it's so Big, and you get an understanding of why they say, if you can make it there, you can make it anywhere. Because yeah. you just see people like mm -hmm. on the, the, the uh, in the subway, whatever. They have just found a way to make money, or find a way to survive, or find a way. Like they are just so resourceful mm -hmm. that they're like, yeah, man. Like if you can live in New York and survive there, you can make it anywhere in the world. And I, I truly believe it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I completely understand that, especially seeing what's happening in New York right now with this pandemic and virus. So um yeah. billion there and they survive. So Yeah, yeah, right. It's, it's, did it's, you spend the majority of your career then in Massachusetts or did you jump back and forth? So you spent the more okay. Yeah. No, so what happened was I was in Massachusetts then and uh I was uh five and oh hmm. uh and I lost my sixth fight. Okay. And so at that time, I was like, okay, um, I still didn't believe that I should be losing. Mm -hmm. So I was like, and I was like reevaluating, like, why did I lose this fight? And, you know, how can I make sure it doesn't happen again? Mm -hmm. And there were some, um, some fighters that would come into Massachusetts and train with uh, Goody Petronelli. Yeah. And they were from Erie, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And they were called, the, their name was the Bizarro, the Bizarro Brothers. Okay. And they, they liked me and they were like, Sid, listen, mm -hmm. you know, in our hometown, in our city, there's a training camp run by this guy, John Davenport. I'm like, training camp? What's with that? And they started telling me about this training camp yeah. and how, you know, all they did there was train, eat, sleep, and fight. And they had a promoter there that had, you know, uh, a good amount of money, and he'd promote shows for them right there in the area of Pennsylvania. And I was just like, I want to come see this training camp. Right. So I, I went to this training camp in area of Pennsylvania. Uh -huh. And, um, I, I connected with the coach and I was like, you know what? I can see why this environment yeah. would breed champions. Yeah. And so that was where I made, made my next move was to Erie, Pennsylvania with John Davenport. Wow. Um, and, uh, you know, long story short, but um, I stayed there and I, I went undefeated for six and a half years. That's um, yeah. 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 So <laughs> I felt lost. six and a half years. Yeah. Thank um, do you were you trying to not let that affect your mentality or were you like eating it up and letting that like fire you up for your next fight like some people i know where they don't want to play into the wins because they feel that that makes them like back off a little bit in the fight where i know other people that they use that as fuel mm -hmm. Hmm. definitely use this fuel yeah. um and just in life in general Everything that you go through, everything you're dealing with, wins, losses, whatever, yeah. it's all preparation for life that's going to come as well, right? So, um, you know, like very early on uh, in life, um, I just knew that I was going to be in intense situations. Yeah. And, you know, the common thing to do when you get in, in those kinds of situations where there may be uh, a cause for anxiety if you freeze, you allow your heart's going fast. And it's just like, okay, I don't believe I could prepare, uh, perform my best under with that kind of um, uh, emotion. So how do I learn to prepare, perform better? Mm -hmm. And so I started uh, at an, an early age. I started like I'd go with my my friends and we go play pool, okay. and you know we would. Uh, we bet a little bit of money on with each other, right? Because if there's money on the line, there's more pressure. 
right? And right. And so we play pool, and I would always be like, I, 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 I make it a pressure filled situation so I could learn to perform under pressure. Yeah. Um, I, I go to the University of Waterloo, um, and I'm okay at basketball. I'm nothing right. great, and I would go in there and I'd look for the best player I could find, mm -hmm. and I'd be like, you, me, one on one, right now. And I play, and most of the times I'd lose, mm -hmm. but I just became comfortable looking for the, the most pressure-filled situation, putting myself in there deliberately, okay. and trying to perform under that. And you so, get yeah, being uncomfortable. You get comfortable being uncomfortable, and uh, I started doing that at a very early age. Um, and just you know, so yeah, like any time there was some sort of setback or whatever, I was like, okay, how's this preparing me, mm -hmm. you know, for the future? My first speaking engagement, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, 17, I was 17 and we had done a fundraiser for, um, to raise money to go to the Nationals, which was, uh, I think, in New Brunswick or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got up there to say thank you. My brother's like, all right, go say thank you to all the people that came out to support you. Yeah. And I got up there and went, eh, eh. <laughs> <clears throat> and he like kicks me, he's like, speak. And I'm like, eh, <clears throat> I can't. And yeah. I, I didn't even say a word. He grabbed the mic and he, you know, he closed for me. I was just like, whoa, mm -hmm. that wasn't right. Like, what, what, what was that all about? And I just knew, though. I was like, I'm going to need to learn to be able to speak to people. Mm -hmm. Speaking to one person is great. Yeah. But if you can speak to 50, 80, 100, 1,000 people at a time, mm -hmm. the impact can be better. And even at 17, I knew that I was going to have to learn how to speak. And so I just put myself in it. Yeah. And it, was, it, it is. It was over and over and over again. Hands sweaty, shaking, you know, <laughs> like, yeah, you know, and but learning how to do that. And so, you know, as we sit here and talk, yeah, I can speak like we're just having a conversation. Yeah. But I was in that, I put myself in that situation to yeah. learn because I knew that it was something I was going to have to do, you know, in the future. Yeah, is public speaking at, as a teacher oh. not something we all look forward to, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. And you get up in front of class and do your speech, it's like... <laughs> 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 and you see people, yeah. you see people that can get up there, they deliver, blah, 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 and you're like, wow, one day I just want to be like them. Mm -hmm. Not realizing that they went through the same thing. Very few people can actually get up there and just deliver like, like nothing. It's, it's a process and it takes time and you, ha you have to practice. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, you, and, and during that practice, you fail lots, don't you? Right? Yeah, I am. Um... <laughs> One, I envy that you just said process because I'm working on my American accent. Two, because <laughs> I'm part of the O's. Um, but mm -hmm. yeah, the, the whole public speaking thing, I'm getting better at it. I'm getting less ums as we go through these lives because the ums and the likes come as a yeah. thing. But I was listening to somebody last night, uh, as you mentioned, it's a process of, he was an FBI negotiator. He was talking on Clubhouse last night and his public speaking capabilities are insane. Like I was envying this guy as I was listening to him speak, uh, but he had to learn, right? And he told me that he actually volunteered at a suicide hotline for six months before he even considered being a hostage negotiator because that was part of his training is learning how to speak to these people, right? Yeah. So, that's really good that's yeah, yeah. It, it's a practice right and so if you decide there's something that you want to achieve and do it is like how do you continually get yourself mm -hmm. um the reps mm -hmm. it's all about the reps right Hi. as we're speaking right here this is another rep and you know you're going to continually get better and better and better who knows i don't know yeah. i don't know if you're gonna have your own tv show what's gonna happen to you i don't know but you're putting the reps right and that's I, I seem to always go back to like the talk show type of stuff because I did. Do you remember back when Susan Cookshear had Daytime Rogers? I do remember that. Yeah. So I did a monthly teaching segment with her for the, over a year. So mm -hmm. I'm really used to that. But I started doing that back when part of it was actually still live TV. And that was insanely nerve wracking. So I feel that that was practice for this. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the live TV thing. You can't mess up, right? <laughs> I hate live TV because <laughs> I was trying to fit a cake project into seven minutes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Wow. Um, somebody mentioned, Kev, I believe it was. He had something to, uh, I have to scroll back. Uh, Kev says, I watched your fight with Bernard Hopkins. 
Mm. So, you know, like I was mentioning, I, I, I was undefeated for six and a half years until I met Bernard Hopkins. And oh. so, yeah, that was my that was my world title fight. I think I was 22 wins and one loss at that time. Huh. And when I fought Bernard Hopkins. And so, uh, yeah, I think he'd been world champion for probably about three or four years before okay. I met him. Yeah. And um, it was it was my moment, you know, HBO. It was, um, for me, it was a short notice fight in terms of they called me because another point had, had fallen out and they called me. Mm -hmm. I was actually fighting at a weight class higher, so I dropped down a weight class. Okay. Um, most of my advisors and people that surrounded me were kind of like, well, why would you do that? You're ranked, mm -hmm. you know, the top five in the world at the weight class higher. You're going to get a world title shot up there. Mm -hmm. It's just like, no, this guy is the very best in the world right now yeah. on HBO. Like, this is why I signed up to be a fighter, yeah. was to test my skills against the very best in the world. Mm -hmm. And on a stage like that, I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm, sign me up. Like, this is it. So um, when that opportunity came up, I, I couldn't resist. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, so that's the fight he was talking about. Still plays some oh, – still plays quite a bit on um, – if you see like boxing classics and so people still message me like hey i just watched your fight with hopkins you know yeah. um and, and that sort of thing so it's That's been cool. uh, yeah i've been getting memory. so many messages about this live today because so many people apparently that follow me are huge fans of yours so just so you know <laughs> oh, that's awesome <laughs> uh, uh, says, do you think you could have done better against hopkins i thought you boxed with within yourself it got cut off Sometimes mm -hmm. the, the messages get cut off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, at that time, at that time, that was the very best I could have done against Hopkins. Mm -hmm. That like that's all the skills I had. That was my the experience, the knowledge, my like I mm -hmm. I prepared to the very best I could for that fight. Mm -hmm. Now, looking back, again, so after that, um, I started working with the trainer. After that fight, actually, I retired. Mm -hmm. All right, so I retired. I was 28, mm -hmm. 28 years old. So I was like, yo, the whole reason, and again, the whole reason I got the boxing is to test my skills against the best in the world. Mm -hmm. I did that. I lost. I couldn't see myself beating Hopkins. Mm -hmm. With what I had, I did, and I didn't win. So why would I continue on? Mm -hmm. So I retired. Um, and I, um, <laughs> again, I was young. <laughs> I smoked cigars. I played golf. Um, you know, back then, Puff Daddy, all these guys were in vogue. In vogue and so I wanted to live that life. Yeah. So that's what I did. I retired. And then um, uh, a gentleman named Everton McEwen approached me, who was a trainer. And he said, listen, I believe I can show you how you could have beat Hopkins. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, right. Yeah. And he goes, no, 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 just come to Toronto and let me show you. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, all right, fine. I got nothing better to do. Mm -hmm. So I went there. And he showed me some stuff that I'd never, in all my years in boxing, I'd never seen or learned or known. And he's, and it all made sense to me. Okay. About what what I wasn't doing and yeah. and how he was listen. He was trained me a little bit more, so I trained him a little bit more. And then he was like, "Now you need to go talk to your wife." Yeah. And I think you should make him. You should come back. Oh. And wow. I was like, you know what? <laughs> I was like, you know what? Yeah. I can see that I'm actually learning and getting better. And so yeah. for that, I'll sign up for that. Yeah. Um, and so that's what I did. I talked to my wife and um, I started back down that road again. Yeah. And uh, it took us uh, four years okay. that we got back to another world title fight. Right. And uh, it was it was a lot of fun. And so the fighter that I finished up, if that fighter had fought Hopkins, yeah, it would have been totally different. But I didn't have those skills in my tool toolbox yet. Yeah. So you technically retired at 28 and then you got put back into it. Was that, I, I know it takes a bit to get going when you get into something again, because I've been in that situation, but yeah. to go into something that large again, what were you thinking mentally? Were, were you really prepared to go back into that or were you sort of a little reserved? Yeah, no, I was, I was right back into it. Um, because I had been to that level, so that world championship level before, I had tasted it. I knew um, what it took to get there. And I, I believed we could do it again. Okay. So I was just like, okay, now um, experience is something you can't, um, you can't make up for experience. Yeah. 
Like there's book knowledge, there's people supporting you, mm. but because I have actually been there before, because I've been there, I just knew within myself what it would take to get back there, and I was ready to make that commitment. Yeah, yeah, I, I know what you mean. So you can you can read a book, yeah. know how to swim, but you don't know how to swim until you've actually gone and done the swimming. Yeah, yeah, and that was the one thing about the Hopkins fight too, right? Mm -hmm. I believed in myself. I was like, I believe I believe I could win this fight. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know. I'd never been to a world title title fight before. Mm -hmm. I didn't know about. I didn't know. I believed what was going to happen. But after that, again, and so, you know, George Foreman was commentating, and you know, oh, better like, and it, and it was good. And um, I was very aggressive. I was uh, good energy. Yeah. Um, and Hopkins was just kind of like, he was waiting. Yeah. He was waiting, right? And I'm like, you're waiting? I'm going to get you. Right? I'm going to get you now. Um, he was very patient because he had confidence. Okay. He'd been there so many times before. He was like, oh, hmm. the young kid with energy. Uh, <laughs> if I wait seven or eight rounds, him the body a couple of times, he'll slow down. I'll get him later on. I had never been to a world title fight. Hmm. I didn't know. I believed, but I didn't know. So that patience came from the confidence of the experience. Okay. And so my second time around, you know, I had that. I could provide that. Yeah. You know, that, yeah. So you beat him the second time? No. So the second time I went, uh, my next title fight was against Jeff Lacey in Las Vegas. Yeah. Where I was ranked number one. And so I didn't win that fight, uh, that fight either. So. But you still won 35 out of 39, which anybody looking at yeah. that, that's insane. <laughs> no, it's crazy. Yeah, um, I just wanted to, uh, so Kev says, personally, I thought you were a boxer that could have beaten Hopkins, but it was a good fight and you did really well. Uh, Jen Ziegler Bain says, so awesome. Um, somebody's, uh, Kev's laughing at the fact that you said cigars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cohibas too. But I, I go to Cuba, I get the Cohibas. <laughs> uh, I wanted you to win mostly because they had some cash on you. <laughs> People are betting on you. <laughs> nice, nice. Um, so, what do you like? How did you transition then back out of boxing then to get to opening SIDFIT? Yeah, so after uh, I retired from boxing, mm. uh, I was 32. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay, what am I going to do now? Mm -hmm. You know, and my greatest sphere of knowledge is in athletics and um, boxing. So I was like, well, it's just a natural transition. Mm -hmm. Um, to go into boxing, and I do actually like business. So, when I was making a decision about Olympics, mm -hmm. it was Olympics pro boxing, mm -hmm. and was actually also going to school for business. Okay, right. And I talked to my brother Keith, who um, he has many degrees, and he's just a school guy. And so I asked him, I said, "Hey, what do you think I should do? Yeah, you know, should I maybe go to school? Because I was like, I'm thinking he's going to say school. I'm like, cool, I'll go to school. And he's like, you know what? There's only a window um, for athletics mm -hmm. in terms of your age. And so you want to take advantage of that window while it's there because you can go to school at any time, at any age. Yeah. So, you know, take care of do the boxing thing. So after the boxing, I was like, okay, so what do I want to do? Um, you know, coaching, business, um, sit fit. That was a natural trans uh, transition for me. Yeah. So I, I did go to school. Like So while I was in Massachusetts, Mm -hmm. I did take some, uh, I didn't train all the time. Mm -hmm. So I went to community college there, did some marketing, some accounting. I took some courses while I was there. Um, and so that, uh, you know, when I did make the transition, it wasn't as hard because I did have a, a basic knowledge, mm -hmm. uh, understanding the business. And I also went to work for um, a, uh, a club. Okay. Um, they were a fitness center, but they also had a, a boxing gym in, in Guelph. Yeah. And so I was their head coach there for a year. And for me, that was my internship. Okay. So I went there and I went there and I learned everything I could about business. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, because I already knew about boxing, but I didn't know about business. And I was, you know, humble enough to know that. And so I went there for a year and I learned about business. And then after that is when uh, we opened up SIDFIT. That's cool. So yeah. Yeah, you still get to do the boxing thing, but it's now you're helping others get into their careers. And I know you coach all ends of the spectrum, right? 
So you coach people who are just doing it recreational and you coach people who are trying to get into it professionally, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, high level amateurs, um, you know, that are going to the Olympics. Mm -hmm. So the whole spectrum and the end, they all bring a sense of fulfillment. Mm -hmm. it, it, it really does. Yeah. Um, coaching young people mm -hmm. and just help watching them gain confidence and belief in themselves mm -hmm. uh, for starting not knowing anything mm -hmm. to be able to execute something simple or something that I consider simple, you consider simple, but for them, it's a big deal. Yeah. And yeah, right. To be able to um, accomplish something mm -hmm. breeds confidence. And it's not just confidence in the gym, it's confidence in life. Yeah. And I think we all, all of us want to have confidence in life. Mm -hmm. Right. And so just watching this. So again, that's just kids. And then, you know, there's the athletes and being able to, to help them march towards their dreams. Cause I've been there. Mm -hmm. I, I know, I know how hard it is uh, mentally and physically and, and everything. And so to be able to, to partner with them uh, and help them with their dreams, uh, that's very rewarding. Yeah. And uh, fitness, you know, the <laughs> fitness, again, <laughs> yeah, fitness, right. <laughs> Oh. I asking before she got on with Sid, so Sid wouldn't like. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh my gosh. But my, the fitness, yeah. My oldest is going to be back doing junior competitive at your gym in March, Reese. Yeah, so he's finally the the school thing kind of threw a wrench in the gear for Lucas and Reese because mm -hmm. it just mm -hmm. kept changing. And then Reese started doing this work program, so he's doing the solid program where it's um, supervised work so he's doing like a welding um yeah. apprenticeship right now uh to get mm -hmm. a ticket eventually um so it's just it's been like a whirlwind so he's getting back into it in march anyways and lucas will be back in your gym and it's funny because the before the first class i was telling lucas about you being a champion and yeah. number one ranked in the world and lucas is like i'm gonna die <laughs> 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 all intimidated walking into the gym but he came out and he was like so excited and happy and it's kind of like the cardio that you take that you are kind of being tortured but you love it right yeah 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 and and again there's that sense of accomplishment at the end so it's yeah. like that was hard but i did it yeah <laughs> you know? right like right. i'm totally dying right now from the cardio but i accomplished it and i'll do it again <laughs> Yeah, I'll do it again. I'll sign up for that again. Yes. <laughs> no, I totally no. Um, Yeah, I've, I've been slacking lately, but I, I feel it's because of this pandemic where everything keeps getting pushed back. So then I'm like, I can just put it off. I can just put it off. I can just put it off. And now everything's gearing back. I'm like, I can't put it off anymore. I need to get back into it. So. Oh, Jen, you want to go through this live? You really want to do this with me live? <laughs> <laughs> He's going to put me <laughs> Right now, just like um, Darren put me through singing a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you see so, that? Darren D'Souza, what? the Canadian tenors, he made me sing on the live. Oh my gosh, really? Yeah. <laughs> oh man. I, I did. So what's cool? Is so tell me, what's been your biggest struggle then? So you've been off a little bit. What's been the biggest struggle? Uh, I think it's just the motivation. Uh, mm. I, I'm a person when I go to tackle something, I want it like instant, right? Like those memes where you're like, I go and do a sit up and I expect abs. But mm -hmm. the mentality with business, right? Anytime I wanted to tackle something business wise, for example, coffee chat, I had an idea and I implemented it in a day, right? Right, I right. Fitness in this pandemic, because I know my goals are long term because of mm -hmm. the rules it's not going to be instant and i am turning 37 so i'm not as young as i once was like yeah, long yeah. <laughs> i yeah, feel that yeah. i'm not seeing results fast enough and then i start to slack or i get injured and then the motivation goes yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so so my recommendation mm -hmm. would be to set smaller goals mm -hmm. that you can actually measure so like how long can you plank right now? 45 seconds? Um, set a goal for next week to build a plank one minute. So yeah. set smaller goals that you can actually measure and achieve. And then as you keep getting those wins, you're just going to feel better. And then mm -hmm. we're going to be well along the path towards the bigger goal, right? Yeah. So the strength is there. It's just shedding the extra weight to see the muscle. Like I'm, I'm now doing five chin ups, which I never thought I would ever be able to do a chin up. 
That's great. Yeah. That, that was, that right there is a huge mental thing, right? To be able to do even one chin up as a female, I feel it just, like, it's crazy. It's yeah. a feeling. Not to like discount females, but scientifically we have less upper body strength. Upper body strength, yeah. One chin up, let alone five, was a huge mental thing for me to be like, okay, I am strong enough to do this. What else can I do? So the weight stuff I have, it's getting back into the cardio, which I kind of signed up for boxing. So you feel free to torture me. <laughs> yeah, nice, nice. Um, I mean, we can Google this later, but I am sure yep. it's going to be less than 10% mm. of females that can do one chin up. Mm -hmm. Like it's going to be low. Like mm -hmm. it is so hard for females to do a chin up. So yeah. For you to be able to do five, mm -hmm. you're a beast. <laughs> Give you another hand. I've been working on this since August. For the, like, I don't want people to think that I just did this instantly. Like, it's been a whole process of getting there, and I, I had. So in August, you could do. I could do zero. zero? Yeah. In that, see. Yeah. Okay. So it's a thing you have to keep working at, and I wasn't just able to pull myself up the first time I had to do a, a jump to bar. I had. Yeah and assistance until I got used to the motions. And now I can do them unassisted up to five and then I'm dying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, those are very cool. So for the and now we're just gonna get the cardio up. Now we have to get the cardio up, yeah. Cause the cardio yeah. lacking, which yeah, sucks because I used to be a soccer player and the cardio used to be fine. So. <laughs> run, 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 run. That's all it is running, yeah. 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 So the boxing at least I can do from home with the kids constantly being here. Um, because Sid, for those of you who don't know, has online classes if you're interested in taking online boxing, right? We do. We have Zoom online um, <clears throat> five days, five days, no, six days, six mm -hmm. days a week. We have Zoom online. Mm -hmm. um, classes are, are great. Um, again, we can teach whatever level you're at, you can jump into these classes. And mm -hmm. that's a great thing. You don't all you need is like a six by six space. Yeah. You jump into the class and feel like you're, you know, really getting good workout. And so it's not just the physical, it's also the mental. And someone was asking me, you know, like, how does, how does boxing, boxing transition? Because a lot of hockey players like to do boxing mm -hmm. and do cross-training. Cross you know, like, why, why, why? Like, if they're not fighters in, in hockey, why would they? Mm -hmm. It's because it's not just physical, it's the mental to be able to like, Mm. while you're exhausting yourself physically, be able to keep the combinations and the timing and the rhythm. Mm. And so it engages the mental aspect as well as the physical yeah. while you're doing it. And um, it, oh, yeah. you, you forget, like, whatever troubles you had when you came in, you're going to forget it because you can't execute mm. all the skills. Like, you could be riding a bike and still thinking about your day. Oh, I got to do this, do that. Now with boxing, you can't. Like, you, you have to actually disengage out of that and just be in the moment in boxing. And that's why so many people really enjoy doing the boxing. Yeah, no, I can I can vouch for that. Even the online classes for those because we have people tuning in from all over the world. Even the online class yeah. when I was doing them, I was drenched in sweat afterwards. So you get a big workout. So for those of you yeah. knocking online classes that haven't tried an online class yet in this pandemic, I highly recommend them because yeah, the online classes yeah they are good. They're very they're very popular. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, it's not necessarily the same as being in the gym, but it's a great substitute. So, yeah, for those yeah. there, though, you guys are back in doing classes now in person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have our in-house classes now as well. Mm -hmm. um, they're a small group. So no more than eight people in a class, one instructor. Um, and again, you just get the benefits of being able to hit the heavy bag and just have a coach, you know, feel that energy, mm -hmm. have them, you know, coaching you right there and then. Yeah. Um, and, you know, just being surrounded again. It's the environment. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I do a lot of uh, just coaching just around getting people um, to find out what's going to work for them. Mm -hmm. I, I believe that's why most people will either quit or stop doing something because mm -hmm. they haven't figured out what works for them. Mm -hmm. It's a journey and you have to be able to assess and be like, okay, that's not working for me. So what does work for me? And for some people, they need to be in an environment mm -hmm. that is conducive to exercising they can't exercise in their kitchen or in their basement it just doesn't work for them mm -hmm. so it's just really you know uh that's one of the things that being in the center does allow for those people who need that training environment mm -hmm. we will provide that training environment for you <laughs> <laughs> yeah 
Mexican, and they will give you birthday <laughs> beats too. <laughs> yeah, give you birthday beats too, for sure. I yeah. remember when I, I started at your gym, I remember posting a birthday photo with my donut. <laughs> You're like, that's your last donut, Jen. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> oh my gosh. It wasn't my last. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kev says, do you still train every day, Sid, or do you have days where you just don't want to? Mm. Oh, the days where I don't want to train? Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, my training regimen right now is I do strength training four days a week, mm -hmm. and I'll do some sort of cardio at least two days a week. Okay. Um, and, uh, yeah, there are there are days when I don't want to train, mm -hmm. um, but I just know, like, how it makes me – it's it's such an anchor mm -hmm. for my day. And uh, during this pandemic, I started walking mm -hmm. uh, a lot more. And so now walking, too, is something that I try and do daily. Yeah. Uh, even if it's too cold, I'll just jump on the treadmill and walk. And mm -hmm. I never would have thought that you would have caught me just walking. Like, I, mm -hmm. I would run. Oh, my gosh. I haven't run in probably six months. Okay. I haven't run. I, I just walk now. And because um, I just like what it does for my mind. It's just, uh, yeah, it's just a different different cadence. And you know, as far as um, my health, um, you know, I'm pretty healthy. And I thought, you know, I had to run, but I didn't have to run. Mm -hmm. I do other types of cardio as well. Mm -hmm. And so, like I said, just finding what works for you and being able to allow that to change. Yeah. Because, you know, with you, you have to be able to forms of cardio, uh, try jump rope for some people that don't like running because I started boxing. Oh my gosh. And I got back into jump rope and I hadn't done jump rope since like elementary school and I love doing skipping. So, yeah. Skipping is so much fun. Um, Cause you can do different things with your feet and be like, oh, well I'm not coordinated. Mm -hmm. Well, everyone can improve their coordination. Yeah. So just trying these little things with your feet and learning how to do a boxer skip and how to skip backwards and. Yeah. And in terms of, um, you know, uh, conditioning, it's its actually lower impact. It's like, oh, I can't run, it's bad on my knees. So I definitely can't skip. Skipping is lower impact than running. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you can't run, try skipping. Yeah, the skipping's great. I love skipping. Um, since I left the army, I just run and work out once a week, no more than that. You're still getting an exercise every week. Yeah, yeah. If that works for you, mm -hmm. you know, like, hey, mm -hmm. give her. Yeah, yeah. I, I have action rules coming out, so I don't get the luxury of working it once a week. <laughs> <laughs> she needs to get off her ass now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but I, I always ask people before we end the live, mm -hmm. um, what's your best advice that you give your younger self? I always find the answers so interesting. Mm. Best advice I give my younger self? Um, you know what? And I'm actually, I'm doing it. Um, but uh, after the Hopkins fight, mm -hmm. um, when I decided to come back to boxing, mm -hmm. I decided that um, I was going to do things with people that I enjoyed being around, that were friends, so to speak. Because um, my first run through to the um, to the title, um, you just did what needed to be done to get to that point, but I didn't really enjoy everything. Okay. And so my second time around, I like I, I enjoyed the moment. I can look back fondly on the people that I met, the relationships I had, mm -hmm. and um, that's the way I do life. That's the way I do business. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, you know, I do it with the people that I want because we're not just doing a transaction; mm -hmm. we're doing life together. Mm -hmm. And so that's the way I look at it, you know, and so the people that I'm surrounding myself with, um, I enjoy their company. Hopefully they enjoy my company mm -hmm. and we can do business. We can do, you know, other like it's but we're doing life together. And, and that's kind of what if I wish I'd learned that a little bit earlier, but uh, I learned it soon enough. And uh, it, it's really made a difference in, in, in how I live my life and the amount of joy that I bring to myself and to others, uh, because, you know, that's. That's a real big, uh, uh, a big part of the impact that you make and leave for people. Yeah, no, that's really great advice because so many people go through life and they hate what they're doing and mm -hmm. they're miserable. And why are they putting themselves through that when they could switch something up and be happy because you only get one life? Yeah, 
<laughs> yeah, it's a choice, right? It's a choice. Yeah. And so, yeah, taking that time to make that choice. Yeah. Jewel, how did I burn this belly off, man? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that's Rome's. Rome's, you're killing me, man. You know what? You you gotta stop eating all them donuts and all that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk nutrition. Okay, that's the next one. All right, I'll, I'll, that's nutrition. Is that I, I've been there. <laughs> 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 I, I I read your nicknames, the Jewel. How did you get that nickname? I didn't uh, so the Jewel came. Uh, I was fighting. I had a fight in. It was like New Orleans. It was mm -hmm. somewhere like in the like yeah, I think it was like New Orleans. Mm -hmm. And uh, after the fight, so I knocked this guy out, mm -hmm. and I come out of the ring, and there's this old guy sitting there, and he looks at me, and my manager goes, goes, ha ha ha, you punch like a mule. And so uh, me and my manager, we start joking around and go, yeah, Sid the Mule, Vanderpool. <laughs> All right, we're joking. So I think he went home and he told his daughter yeah. um, the story. And she's just like, no, nah, he should be Sid the Jewel. You know, jewels, they're precious. They're formed under pressure. And, and he came back to me. He's like, and I was like, yeah, the Jewel. Like that is, that's, that's it. And then that's what stuck. So it's better than the Mule. I mean, my wife calls me a mule sometimes, but yeah, the jewel, I prefer the jewel. <laughs> yeah, wives don't, well, I, as a wife, just sometimes, ignore, well, don't ignore things we say, but don't take them to heart. <laughs> 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 I'm telling anyone to ignore what their wife is saying. <laughs> no, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Yeah, don't, don't message me and tell me that you got killed by your wife because of what Jen said. <laughs> <laughs> that's not the call uh, that we want. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's not... <laughs> Yeah, no, that's really cool. That's a really cool story. I didn't know that. Yeah. I read that on, I, I took notes. <laughs> 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 I read that on your site. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, the last thing I wanted to ask you, but before mm -hmm. I open it up for questions and then I let you go on for the rest of your day, you were in the movie Against the Ropes. When did yeah, with Meg Bryant. Yeah. When did that happen? Um, it happened in 2000 and I don't know what year it happened in. Um, <laughs> so it was Meg Ryan and Omar Epps. Mm -hmm. Um, what happened? How did I get that? Oh, because the stunt coordinator, Nick, okay. um, was looking for fighters to be in the movie. Mm -hmm. And I was at the same gym that Nick was training at in Toronto. And he's like, just audition, Sid. So I went and I auditioned and I got a role. And, um... Yeah, it was pretty cool. Um, I, Jen, I didn't realize how, how actually how hard actors and actresses work. Like, it is work, people. Yes. Like, it <laughs> is work. Like, we did one, one scene. Mm -hmm. We spent all day doing one scene um, at the CNE Grand Stadium or Exhibition Place, whatever. Yeah. And so they had to bring the fans in, and they had to get one angle. Mm -hmm. Same thing, another angle, another angle, another angle, um, which was cool because I was actually uh, also paid as a, um, a stuntman because mm -hmm. I took a fall because I hit the canvas. Yeah. So every time they had to reshoot it and I hit the canvas, that's considered another fall. And you get paid more for each fall you take. Okay. So I was like, keep knocking <laughs> me down. <laughs> You do special on-screen combat training to learn how to do it for camera. Yeah. Yeah. We spent um, at least, I'm going to say, at least, I'm going to say like six, eight days mm -hmm. rehearsing because they had a specific, they, uh, Ron Lyle and George Foreman, they wanted me to watch that fight and they wanted me to kind of mimic that feel, okay. you know, back and forth, back and forth. Mm -hmm. And so we watched that, we rehearsed and learned how to take and make the punch look, you know, effective. Yeah. Um, yeah, so no, we did, we did rehearse. And so, yeah, um, it's so that was like training with Sid or training. I, I did Taekwondo too, or just everything that you learn in technically helps you, but you have to adjust everything for camera. So when you're doing like a right hook, usually you'd be coming in and actually connecting. You're actually just doing a straight arm across the camera to sell it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, and the person's getting hit's got to make it look big. It's gotta be big. Everything's big and yeah. extra and, yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. You learn. And the, the differences, and I didn't understand the difference until I started taking on screen comic classes. I'm like, everything I learned just kind of went out the door. 
yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not it, everything, because yeah. you still got to look and stand and look the part, right? Yeah. Then you, you get used to doing one movement, but then they tell you to do a right hook and you have to do the right hook for camera. <laughs> for camera, yeah, absolutely, so that absolutely. Is you. Every, it does all help because otherwise actresses and stuff wouldn't take all these classes. But yeah. learning how to do it for camera, which is the difference, yeah. And I'm sure you, yeah. you're like, this doesn't mm -hmm. feel normal. <laughs> no, and for um, actors too and actresses, I think also the training that they take, like the real training, mm -hmm. helps them get in the mindset, helps them get in that um, yeah. character, right? Because yeah. once you've actually done real... Over and over and over and over and over. <laughs> yeah. You're like, oh my gosh. Yeah, I got it. I know it. Yeah. So, yeah. so People don't realize that some scenes, like even a short two-minute scene could take one to two hours to film. So you're learning yeah. that fight move over and over and over and over and you're out of breath <laughs> and you're like so tired but you still have to go and sell it for camera like nothing happened <laughs> you gotta bring that energy right you gotta bring the same energy you brought the first take mm -hmm. do it again yeah. <laughs> yeah, do it again do it again spritz 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 do it again <laughs> yeah we were filming one fight scene for a tv show i was in i was in a white sleeveless dress in like minus 14. And I was having oh. to get thrown into the snow and then get back up. And there's like a whole bunch of stuff. So <laughs> I had to keep doing it over and over again. And I had to be in the mentality where I'm ignoring the fact that I'm literally freezing at that moment and just keep playing it. Like I'm this like badass person who's kicking ass right now. So the box wow. it does help with that mentality of being able to get back in and just zone in on what you need to get done. Yeah. Yeah. And you're like, actor times or actress times th two because you're like mm. acting like you're not cold and then you got to act the part that like the scene right <laughs> like it's yeah. takes a lot of focus yeah so that the boxing is something that i really recommend for anyone so yeah and sit yeah. online classes for those of you in different countries <laughs> yeah absolutely jump join us online absolutely yeah. and i teach a uh, a zoom platinum Okay. um class on wednesday nights and we just i just break down the boxing mm -hmm. just I, I really want people to understand um not just the moves but the purpose behind the moves and the whole lifestyle and so i really enjoy teaching that that platinum class that's awesome yeah, yeah. i will post the links for that uh below okay this yep. video. Uh, if you go to igtv like the actual tab for igtv the links are actually yep. they're not clickable on just my profile but if you go to the actual tab then they're clickable and you can just go right over to Sid's page. Um, so there's a, I think there's like a couple questions before you go. Sneezed, uh, okay. Sneezed, I, I believe that's probably just like your profile name. Um, would you ever get back in the ring for a showcase fight? Um, I guess after watching, you know, some of these mm. celebrity matches and um, YouTubers, uh, yeah, I, I would consider it against the right person. You know, Jake Paul. Jake Paul, bring it. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> for the right person, Sid will go torture himself again. <laughs> That's right, for the right person. <laughs> for the right person. Um, so Kev says, will you be doing any more films, Sid? I know you just did a commercial, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, I did a commercial with uh, with Mandy Bujold, and it was for and it's just on energy Canadian. I don't know Canadian energy or something. Yeah. Um. So that'll be coming out soon. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Um. One thing that I learned, um, you know, through the pandemic, mm -hmm. is that the casting, the casting now, it's all just virtual. So my thing was, I didn't like to go to Toronto all the time, sit there all day in this casting call, like. Mm -hmm. It's such a long process, I mean, it's like it's and for <laughs> man, it's it, right. But now you can do it online. You don't have to drive to Toronto and sit and wait. So I will be doing more like auditions. I will because yeah, it's I do. It's fun. Yeah, and they're constantly looking for boxers. I think I've sent you a couple casting calls for boxing. Yeah, keep sending them to me. Yeah, yeah, please do. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's funny how the industries change, which allows and opens it up for so many more people, right? That couldn't possibly do it before, so. Yeah, yeah, no, so. And I don't feel it's gonna be going back to in-person editions anytime soon because of the virus. And it's actually easier, some casting directors have been saying, because they can fit more people in with self-tapes, right? 
or Zoom auditions yeah. than they would be able to do with a room because they're limited when they're doing in-person auditions to how many people they can see. So, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. I think that's probably one thing that's going to stay. Yeah. Does anyone have any more questions for Sid before I let him go? Because we've almost kept him for an hour and he needs to get on with his day. <laughs> I do. I do. I do. I do. Uh, I'll just wait like 30 seconds because I know there's okay. Okay. Cool. Thank you so much. So people can find you at, is it Sid Fit Health, right? Yep, sidfithealth.ca. Uh, my Instagram is boxing by Sid. Mm -hmm. And then I'm on Facebook as well. Yeah, and then there's the other Instagram for the actual um, Sidfit Health, right? What Sidfit Personal, yeah, Sidfit Personal. Right. Yeah. Make sure to tag all those below this video for any of those people who want to go check them out. Uh, Kev says, great chat, brilliant. Both Jen and Sid loved every minute of this. <laughs> oh, awesome. And Good. Glad you joined us. I'll be saving the replay for those of you who want to go back and watch it again. And I'll be adding show notes. So for those who want to skip to any point in the chat and thank you so much for joining me. I'm so glad we got to do this and I'll be me too, Jenna. And I'm glad you're doing this. This is, this is just awesome. So keep it up all the best and uh, keep getting better. Thank you so much. I will see you in class soon. <laughs> I look forward to it. All right, thanks. Bye. All right. Bye Jenna.